The history of the opera Dido and Aeneas dates back to the 15th century. According to Emma Riggle, this opera was performed in 1689 at the Josias Priest Girls' School in London. This student production managed to become the highest regarded opera in the history of English music. This opera is a little over an hour in duration and consists of three acts. According to James Paxton from the fourth volume of The Reception of Myth and Mythology, there is a cast of several characters and specific voice parts. We will focus on the main cast. Dido, the Queen of Carthage, is a soprano royal that falls in love with a powerful tenor, Aeneas. Aeneas is the Trojan prince. He lands in Carthage after fleeing from the Trojan War. He has been defeated by Troy. However, he does not stay in Carthage for long. The mezzo-soprano sorceress and her two soprano witches despise Dido. Due to this hatred, they tell Aeneas that his fate is to leave and be the founder of the Roman Empire. Aeneas leaves Dido. Dido, now heartbroken, takes comfort in her sister, Belinda. This soprano vocalist comforts Dido. However, Dido's heart is so torn that she kills herself and sings a final powerful laminate as last words to her sister. According to Patrick Hunt from the 2011 Electrium magazine article, the storyline of this opera is roughly taken from the book four of Virgil's Aeneid. There is also some speculation over whether the composer, Henry Purchell, wrote the opera. Some believe Purchell's mentor, John Blow, composed this opera. However, this is still unknown. According to Aaron Green from the Bout.com article, this opera was easily divided into three acts. The first act introduced, introduced all the characters. Aeneas sees Dido and asks for her hand in marriage. She accepts. In Act 2 is when the sorceress and her witches plan to cause trouble for Carthage and the Queen. Act 3 is when Dido realizes that Aeneas has left her and she commits suicide. I believe this opera to be extremely powerful. Dido and Aeneas seem to be much like a Shakespearean tragedy. However, during the Baroque period of music, tragedy of this sort was never introduced. In a normal Baroque opera, the main character's life may have been threatened, however the heroine always lived in triumph of success at the end. This opera took a completely different route, and the main character killed herself. Changing the Standard of Opera The most memorable piece of this opera, Dido's Laminate, proves to be the most iconic song in opera history. been many paintings and other forms of artwork depicting the most iconic moments in this opera. Emma Riggle describes this opera as the high school musical of 1689. Although we do not have the joyous ending and happy lovers, we do have a form of the sorceress and the witches, a Dido, and an Aeneas. Dido and Aeneas changed the platform of every opera to follow. The first opera of Henry Purcell's career was truly a great start to the tragedy that now ensues in many of today's operas.